we finally got our first real glimpse at the upcoming Mortal Kombat movie reboot. And while it looks to provide the same level of satisfyingly gory martial arts action, along with some very familiar characters, a lot of those familiar characters look a little bit different from how they were portrayed in the original game. So let's dive right in and break down some of these differences. At the start of the trailer, we see Jax facing off against Sub-Zero in his tank top slash dog tag special forces attire, something that doesn't really have a close comparison in the games, but once he gains his bionic metal arms, he looks closer to the Jax we see in Mortal Kombat 9 shirtless, with grafted metal arms, and dark green pants. It's been confirmed that the Sub-Zero featured in the Mortal Kombat movie is Bihan, the original Sub-Zero from the first Mortal Kombat game back in 1992. Obviously, Sub-Zero's aesthetic has changed dramatically since the very beginning of the series, and the version in the movie takes some liberties with the classic ninja look by equipping him with some pretty heavy-duty armor, rather than the blue vest worn over his black ninja gi. Still, the essence of Sub-Zero comes through with the protruding shoulder pauldrons, intricate mask design, and overall bluish hue to the overall costume. Among all of the cast, the Sonya in the movie probably looks the closest to her video game counterpart, at least as far as costume is concerned, sporting a similar tank top to the one she wears in Mortal Kombat 1, though not quite as low cut. She's missing the bandana from the first three games, but her hair is tied up in a ponytail, which is a look that she's sported frequently throughout the series in pretty much every game, with the exception of the first two, Deadly Alliance, Deception, and Armageddon, which featured a short-haired Sonya. Scorpion is first introduced in the trailer as Hanzo Hasashi, his human form, which we've seen throughout the games typically sporting a yellow headband. It's basically just Scorpion without the mask and hood. Movie Hanzo ditches the black in favor of a brown gi with a yellow trim. Once he reappears as Scorpion, his look seems primarily inspired by his default costume in Mortal Kombat 11 with a hood that protrudes over his head. It's also important to note that despite being a Shirai Ryu ninja, he clearly is wearing samurai-inspired armor. Kano has always looked like a completely new character in just about every new iteration of Mortal Kombat, so it comes as no surprise that this movie version doesn't really have a close approximation to the games. Notably, he's missing his iconic metal faceplate and glowing red eye, despite using the classic eye laser, which has been his singular defining characteristic through the years, aside from the Australian accent anyway. Early iterations of Liu Kang saw him wearing just a headband and pants, so his movie counterpart clearly takes a lot of inspiration from the Mortal Kombat 11 Liu Kang, sporting the white shirt, red belt, loose-fitting pants, and in at least one scene, the red headband. You will not test my faith. Kung Lao's look in the Mortal Kombat movie is a best-of mashup of his costumes throughout Mortal Kombat history. The game that it seems like it takes the most inspiration from, though, is Mortal Kombat X, specifically his tournament costume. He's got the dragon stitched onto his gi on the left side, the black, blue, and red color motif, and of course, his signature blade hat. Perhaps the most controversial change in character design is Melina's. In the games, Melina's character has always been defined by a monster masquerading behind a disguise of beauty with a mask that hides a horribly grotesque mouth and razor sharp teeth. We only really get one clear shot of Melina in the trailer, and while she's definitely got some scars and some slightly pointed teeth that she may want to hide with a mask, it's certainly not at the monstrous levels that it's portrayed as in pretty much every game she's in. We only see Goro for a few seconds, but in that glimpse, we see a style that's very reminiscent of the Goro from Mortal Kombat X, which trades in the red loincloth for a brown one that has a much more leathery look to it. Likewise, we also don't see much of Raiden, but he's lacking the skin-tight black bodysuit that he almost always wears underneath his usual attire. Other than that, his costume most closely resembles the default Mortal Kombat 11 skin. The good blue eye glowing Raiden anyway, not the evil red eye glowing one but I will have sufficient strength. Shang Tsung is typically portrayed as an unarmored sorcerer wearing robes or some other sort of fancy clothes, so his look in the movie feels very much like its own new thing, with Shang now rocking ornate armor. To be honest, his closest iteration to this new movie is probably the old movie where he was played by Kari Hiroyuki Tagawa. And that's all the major players in this trailer for the Mortal Kombat movie. Did we miss anything? Let us know in the comments! And for more Mortal Kombat, make sure to check out a breakdown of the trailer from the director himself, along with our explainer of the origin of Scorpion. And for everything else, keep it here on IGN.